Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode one of the Binary Bros, where we bring you innovation in action. And today I've got a very something very special to share with you guys. So, before we get started, let me ask you a question. If there was one thing that you could have in vanilla Minecraft, what would that be? For me, that would be better automation tools. As fun as survival is, I've always found the most fun in building machines and systems to continually make my life better. But there's some limitations with vanilla Minecraft. For instance, though you can automate some things like farming, you're always going to be cutting down your own trees, mining your own stone with a pickaxe. So it's limited in how technological you can make the game. Now, different mods like Industrial Craft or Tekkit have made it so that those abilities are extended to, the, to both the industrial and the modern age of and uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to work on a module that could be used in vanilla Minecraft that would recreate some of that functionality. So I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, the Blast Miner module. Now, even though it has Miner in its name, this module is multi-purpose enough to be used in inventions that automate all sorts of different activities within Minecraft. The main thing that I designed it for, though, is for the automation of mining. It creates autonomous, programmable drones that will do your mining for you. Sound pretty cool? Well, let's crack on and I'll show you exactly how this works. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need a, a hopper minecart. This is the beginning of the, of the recipe to create these. First, you'll place it down. In the center, you'll place 32 TNT, two blocks of iron on each side, and one redstone torch on each side. The recipe is kind of arbitrary, but I, wanted, but I wanted it to be a fairly expensive thing to make because of how useful it is. And because this uses explosions and the collection of blocks, I wanted it to, to require a lot of TNT in the recipe to be balanced. So that's the recipe that I decided upon. So how do you use the Blast Miner module? Well, the way that you program what it's supposed to do is you place one redstone torch in any of these five slots. Each of the five slots tells it to do something different. So for instance, if I place this redstone torch just like this in the first slot, you'll see the unit begins to move to the south. It's not doing anything right now because it hasn't encountered any blocks, but as soon as it encounters a block, it will activate mining mode, which I'll show you in a bit. So here we see it going to the north. As soon as it finds this railroad, it creates a small explosion to pick up the block. And you see now the rail is within the unit. This is exactly how the miner works. It mines on the, both the level that it's at and the level below it. So just real quickly, I'll show you the other two rail orientations. You have um, eastward and then westward. So let me head it back towards our little platform. And I'll show you a few other things that this module can do. Now you might ask yourself, little rovers that run around are cool, but this isn't as useful as you made it out to sound. What's all, all that automation stuff that you were talking about? Well, while it's designed for mining, I have a fifth mode here, which I'll explain after I show the mining fun functionality that enables this unit to go into passive mode and mine any blocks that it detects above it. However, in the mining mode, it will mine blocks directly around it at different spots in the inventory. I'll show you exactly how that works, because it took some finagling to make this as efficient as possible. So here you see a typical underground, <laughs> except for on this side there's far more ores than usual. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run my unit through this. It'll mine the block at its own level and one above. And since it's a hopper mine cart, the blast miner will pick up both of those blocks. It only mines exactly at those two areas. I've, I've controlled the explosions very precisely so that we'll, it will mine in straight tunnels just like a player would and collect the produce that it does. Now one of the limitations you might notice is that this only has five slots. So pretty quickly, if it runs into lots of types of materials, it's going to fill up. However, that's not. you can actually use that to your advantage since this is actually a hopper mine cart. You can use it as a filter to decide exactly what you want it to store beforehand. For instance, if I wanted it to only pick up all the stone in the row, I could have send it off with stone and it would only pick up that. But let me show you real quick how this works. So the explosion in the, in the movement part was actually pretty simple, but making this an efficient miner was actually the hard part. And this is because each block has a different blast resistance. So ores here, they have a lower blast resistance than main stone. So if I use a a blast that's perfect for picking up ores, as soon as I hit stone, 
the, the module will no longer be able to mine stone, which for an underground miner is pretty bad, right? You want it to be able to mine stone at least. So the solution that I came up with is actually to use a two-tiered explosion. First, the module will check that these blocks are not air, and if they are, it'll use a low-powered explosion optimized to collect ores and softer and medium-range blocks like wood and uh, tiles, railroads, things like that. As soon as it then it rechecks the block, and if the block is still there, it'll trigger one larger, more powerful explosion. So as soon as you, and that's primed to pick up all the types of stone. So let me show you real quick how this works. So here it begins to mine. You'll see it's pretty efficient at what it does. It uses the two low-powered explosions to exactly collect all the ores. Occasionally it leaves a little bit behind if the ores scatter a little bit. But if it's digging at a wall, actually, there isn't ver anywhere for these to go. Now notice that even if it doesn't completely pick up this, and this is because its inventory is already full with other things, it actually doesn't destroy these items because I've actually optimized this machine to give invulnerability to the items that it drops so that you can come along behind it and pick up what it ran out of inventory space. This was critical because these very easily ran out of space, so I didn't want them to destroy the, dark, the items that were falling on the ground after they fill up. Now you'll, you'll see here, it's actually using a mixed explosion, a low-powered one for, the, for just the ores, and then just two, and then only a higher one for the one block that's stone. And if you want it to stop, it'll stop as soon as it moves over this, hop, this uh, fil filter hopper that I have here to pull the, the redstone torch out of the unit. So that's the basic gist of the system optimized to be especially efficient for ores. You'll lose a little bit, maybe maybe 40% of the dirt or the stone because the explosions aren't perfectly primed for those. But this was my optimization for having a low lag system that would pick up the things that I thought was probably most critical. And as a system, I think it's pretty cool and very easily automates mining. You can put those, those filter hoppers at the end. It's actually a system that James96, one of my the guys who plays my maps and uses my modules came up with. He tested out the system and that he had that idea. Another thing you can do is you can place a hole in front of it and I've actually designed these systems to stop when they detect a hole in front of them that they would fall into. So let me show you, you that real quick. So here we see the unit it's headed, headed here and in a normal scenario it would fall into this hole which would be undesirable. But I've designed the, because it it would lose the level it was mining at, it could get all the way down to bedrock and you, you might lose the unit. But I've designed it to stop when it detects itself under a hole. Now, note that if it's perfectly aligned with that hole, there's still a chance it can fall in. I didn't have it check all around it for holes because it actually turns out to be a lot less command blocks and a lot less lag using this unit if it only checks the block directly below it. But as a smart user, you can know that and have it slightly offset from blocks so that this works about 100% of the time. So if I want it to continue on, I'll go ahead and fill up this hole, and it sees that it can continue. Now, it also will stop if it detects any form of water below itself, such as it come, came upon a subterranean lake that it might sink into. So let me go ahead and send it past that. Same thing with lava. It'll stop right on the lava. And also, any liquids that it detects at its own level. Um, originally, I had it just plow through these, these but I found that that would... At certain levels, that would allow it to go halfway into a lava, a lava pool, and then stop, kind of hidden, so it was hard to find it after that point. So I just had it stop whenever it encounters any liquid. You'll hear the boom stopping, and you can go over, go ahead over there and clear out the liquid, and go ahead and get it moving again. But this seemed the safest way to keep the user from using it. So you'll see when it first hits there, it's going to go ahead and trigger one explosion because it's in its normal cycle. But the next check, it detects that, oh, it's sitting on lava, and so it'll stop right at the edge of the pool. And so you should never lose these guys, um, and they should stop and pre preserve themselves when they hit the edge. So if you want, you can use as many of these tiled in a row as you want. So for instance, these right here, I'd really like two to be mining at once. So you can clear out whole rooms using these, and as you can see, this is basically a normal underground at this side, and it's it's perfectly optimized to pick up all of these different ores that it's encountering. You see it got some dirt there, some stone. It's a pretty good general purpose miner. The one, the one problem obviously being if it runs out of inventory space, it can't pick up all the supplies, but I think that's something that 
that users will have a be able to work around pretty easily. One thing that you can actually do, um, I de I'm not demoing this today, but you can actually set two of these to run right behind each other, having one filtered for one type of ob object and the other one filtered for the other type of item, and then it'll actually pick up all the types of things that you might find under the uh, in the underground between the two of them. So let me go ahead and prime the filter hopper just like so. And as soon as they reach this stopping point, they're going to stop nicely right there. So you can see that they cleared out a whole section for me. So this allows you, if you get maybe five of these, to just send them off, do, let them do their own thing, strip mining for you, and you just kind of go along behind and pick out the ores they expose. It makes mining much more easy and a lot more mass producible. And you can see how these things have great use underground. However, what about the invention side of things that I was talking about? You know, I said I invented this because I wanted to bring a greater degree of automation to vanilla Minecraft. Well, that's the fifth mode of this of this module. So, so far I've only showed you the redstone torch in the first four slots, which is mining mode. I'm now going to show you a mode that I enabled for these called passive mode. So here you see my, our original unit that we created a little while ago. I'm going to go ahead and place a redstone torch in the last slot. This unit now knows that it's in passive mode. And pet, what passive mode basically is, is if it detects a block not at its own level, not at the level above it, but one above that, it's going to go ahead and mine that. And it also uses the same efficient two-tiered explosion. So if it's something soft like dirt, it's only going to use the one low-powered explosion so that it doesn't destroy the block. If it's something hard like stone, you'll see two explosions. Now you might see a, a creeper flicker for a second. I actually use a creeper for for my explosion because I can control the explosion power of it. It turns out that TNT is twice as powerful as you want for, for even the, my most powerful explosion, so I had to use a creeper since that's the only type of explosion besides wither skulls and fireballs that you can control the, ex the actual explosion power of. TNT, you can't do that. Wither skulls have a set power of one, and that's actually what I use for the first stage. Fireballs work as well, but I found them to trigger random fire around themselves occasionally, which isn't the best if you're trying to not burn up your items and things like that. Or So this turned out to be the best system for minimizing collateral damage to the environment and keeping the player pretty safe. So this whole time I've been in creative mode. I'm going to go ahead and go into game mode zero to show you to show you how this module performs with me nearby. So as you can see I can get really close to this thing and I'm still pretty safe, almost like right up on it. The second tier explosion, as long as I'm about a radius of two away, I'm pretty safe. So if I'm here, you'll see I take a good degree of damage. But if I'm back here, at a reasonable distance, no damage at all. So this is optimized to be both most efficient at mining and also safest to the operator. And that's kind of what I was going for. So now that I've shown you passive mode, uh, if you're like me, you already have a lot of ideas turning in your head. This system basically mines any block that you design to push above it, and it mines a lot of blocks that were previously unharvestable using op automatable systems. There's some complicated systems that use withers, but I for one don't really like them. They're inherently unstable. If the wither ever escapes, he's going to wreck everything around him. So this is a much safer, more modular way of doing this. And it's a lot more compact as well. So let me show you a, just a couple easy ideas that I had the first day after I built this module, actually. So here's a basic cobblestone generator. I've now automated cobblestone generating using the passive mining mode here. So you'll see I just place a redstone torch in the last slot, and this baby starts to go. And it mines pretty much every cobblestone block that the cobblestone generator creates and collects it within itself. If you want additional storage, you can put hoppers and chests below this to collect even more. I put obsidian around. Usually it's pretty safe to the surrounding blocks, but occasionally if you get an explosion that triggers part way out of a block, you'll have a higher power and that can cause some collateral damage. So just to be safe, I usually surround my automated farms in obsidian. Now you notice this isn't 100%. They're actually the explosion scale is exponential. So the first one is perfect for picking up wooden ores. The second one but it's just not powerful enough to, to take st out stone. So the second level explosion that's powerful enough to take out stone actually destroys it about 40% of the time. So that's unfortunate, but it's just something you got to deal with. I mean, it is a completely automatable system. It's going to get plenty of cobblestone anyway, but that's one downside that I wanted to make clear to you guys. So here's another system, and this is actually my favorite system here. So let me show you an automated 
graveling system. So I, for one, really hate mining for graveling for flint. I mean, you need it for arrows. You got to do it, but it can take forever. And based on how unlucky you are with the random generator, this could really it could, you could sit there for hours trying to trying to return this stuff. So I've created an automated system that will blow up your your gravel and pop the flint and the gravel back up to you as it blows it up so you can just keep feeding back until you've turned through a whole stack. So let me basically show you that in action here. I'll go into game mode zero so you can see it actually being used up here. So, so let me back up a little bit. So you can see the explosion, since there's nowhere else for the items to go, they come up the stack and travel back to me. So you'll see any flint that's created goes directly into my inventory. Any gravel that doesn't become flint actually goes right back to me as well. So I can just basically sit here, AFKing, hold the, holding down the right mouse button, and I can convert entire stacks of gravel at a time into flint. A lot easier of a system, in my opinion, than it previously was. So that's all I'm going to show of that. But I was pretty happy with this design. It's something that's one of those useful little things that you can design using this new mechanic. So lastly, there's there's plenty of ways to grind mobs in Mo vanilla Minecraft and to do it automatically. One of the easiest ways is to do um, a long fall tra trap. A lot of people will use a fall trap for a spawner. However, using the blast miner module, you can do a much more compact system. So you can basically just have these guys just a few blocks below the spawner. So this will work on spawners that are really close to bedrock that the other systems don't work on. All you got to do is engage passive mining mode. And this uses a trick based on my module. My module explodes if it detects anything other than air. So water, which is indestructible to explosions, will trigger it. And it'll continue to use both powered explosions. So any pigmen that fall down there are obliterated by the module, which is an automatic grinding process in water. It does no damage to blocks in water, but it damages entities still. And all of that funnels down into a chest so you can basically just sit here next to the module like you would any other AFK farm and it'll just run through it all and the advantage another advantage of this is because is because the spawner can be so close to the actual grinding mechanism it's a much faster way to to go through spawners and it's easier to AFK near them as well so obviously there's other ways of doing this but this is just another option using this module that I wanted to demo so let me go ahead and turn this off and that is the last example I was going to give today, uh, but really the sky's the limit with this module, guys. Um, I was astounded just by the amount of possibilities this little th this passive mode enables. So because it will mine any block, obviously, if I engage passive mode on this thing, I could make an automated tree farm. I could make automated mining, as you already saw. I can make automated cobblestone generators, aut automated flint grinders, automated mob grinders, basically any block, stone or lower, you can automatically collect. So this is a very, very useful system for collecting many, many types of blocks that were previously unautomatable. So that's basically the gist. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, everyone. Um, if you want to try this out for yourself, I have the world download that I just demoed this in, and I also have an MC edit schematic if you want to install this into a world of your choice. Just import it and press the button to initialize the scoreboard, um, and it should start working. I've optimized this for lag and performance, but let me know how, if you have any issues, and I look forward to seeing your creations with this module. Have fun.